the mobility scooter rattling in the boot. Squeaky, squeak, squeak. in the back is the, the seat of the mobility scooter is rubbing against part of the forks lever of the back seat like on the top part of it that's what's causing all the squeaky squeak squeaks of course there's the little rattles which is off the mobility scooter and all where it, uh, its handlebars fold down and they can fit in the car oops now telling me low fuel so I've got to try and get the ashen in now, a little bit of fuel.
about four and a half to five, four and a half thousand revs, or three and a half thousand revs, it really starts to take off a lot more. But you can toodle around and no revs all day in it, and try and use less fuel if you feel like driving slow. Right, we'll stick 20 quid in here, I think. And pick this uh, nighttime drive up again. See how far this gets with the 20 quid put in. Remember the petrol fillers on the left hand side of this. Hopefully, we can get quite close to the line. Oop, pumps off. Okay, let's go to this pump over here. Pumps off, pumps off. Hopefully this one's on. Okay, you fill this bugger up. Okay, 25 and 25. Let's see what I got to. Almost halfway. Not bad. And that's all prices too. Right. Give them. Look at the lovely orange notes. Okay, let's go. Second, just rev it up a bit. Yep, well, there's a the speed limit, let's back off a bit. So, a bit of a kick to it if you want to have it. So, that to you. Down to 30 here from 6th. A bit of rev you rev out of this one. Collision warning. Get the clutch of it. Well, that'd be the. Now oh, you got your daytime running lights on. Mr. Policeman. Right. He'll be coming back round because I was doing a bit of speed up there, but now I'm doing 60. in second and then hit in the third and it could go up you could crack on a bit more there if you wanted to but I'm trying to stay at the speed limit
came in third, it's a lot smoother. But yeah, I think you can get a lot more speed if you do it. You can pick up speed a lot quicker, obviously, if you do it in second. And now it's creeping up past 60 again. Engage cruise control. Keep it at 60. Clean. I've just been down to Newcastle and back today since it's last was washed. But it's been a bit rainy here. So hopefully we can just pull in this little spot here. Give you guys a little bit of a walk around with the car. At night, with the lights on and the engine running, it'll go bong 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 because it's left on. I took the key out. Here it is. Right, let's do a little bit of a walk around at night. Oh, the fog lights on. the indicators on for you. This is a squeaky scooter in the back, squeaking on the back seat. Has it on for a bit. If someone isn't there, they blip them for us. I got a nice and raspy sound to them. Right, oh, it's too cold. Let's get back in here and do some more driving. Bing, bing. Oh. There you go, lock that door. Seatbelt back on. So, we're going to go down to Bedlington, through Bedlington Station. And then just come back up the spine road, back to Pegswood. Make sure you use it on nice and straight. Right, take them off. Creek goes. The mobility scooter. Beam. 
that because he flashed. I don't know. Eight are good enough, though, that you'll have to put them on. Hmm. Seems to come on there. Strange how they work, these automatic full beam lights. Should go off now, we're coming into street lamps. Timer, not a sensor. I'm in fourth, set the cruise control to 30 going up this hill. See if we just leave it in fourth going all the way up the hill. Take it down to 28, 30, stay keeps up a little bit. Oh you're going over, speed I set you to, stay at 30. This is a challenge for the torque, this. In fourth of a hill. Fourth in a six-speed gearbox going up a hill with the cruise control on. Big fat me in the front and mobility scooter, another mobility aid in the boot for weight. And got up there quite easy. Right, I think I might go to the left. Then yeah, through Stakeford. And then down to Bedington. Second to fourth, we engage cruise control at 30. Well, I don't use a car right here at the moment. So, yeah, the, here I am in my new MG HS, or our um, new MG HS. Now, as I'm sure you've all got lots and lots of questions. And I will be making a proper review video, but this is just my like first little tootle along at night in it. Giving you a bit of a taster of it. But I will do a proper full review video of it soon. I don't know, you're all probably wondering why we've got this. It's basically, if I was still a taxi driver, I would have kept the Logan. It would have been worth spending the money it needed spending on it for maintenance. But. Uh, But these are being available, these, these manual HS's <coughs> in the Excite trim are basically available now on the mobility at no deposit. Well, no upfront payment. It's not really a deposit because you don't get it back. But on the mobility scheme, they pay, you get the like 250 ish pound a month car payment. And uh, you can get a lot of cars just on that without a, without a further payment, initial advance payment on it. And the thing about this is, it's such a lot of car for the money, you don't have to pay an advance payment on it. Whereas if you were getting an equivalent Audi this size, or maybe we're wanting a C-Max, which is a little bit smaller than this, but a Ford C-Max, they're all like two grand up. I mean, a C-Max is two and a half. If I wanted, like, I think it was an Audi is it a Q4 or a Q8, they're all like thousands of pounds advance payments on them. And uh, really, we just needed something higher for my mother to get in and out of. So. Here we are with this, and I, I took a test drive of the automatic one of these. And, but that wasn't automatic, it was a manual, wasn't it? The one in, in the exclusive trim it was actually. It was just still a manual. I thought, hey, I'd love one of them in automatic because it has adaptive cruise control and everything. And um, yeah, the Excite trim one was uh, £200 for the automatic, but because of the coronavirus and other things, there's um, five, six month plus wait on one of these. And I didn't think I could keep the Logan going without some serious money spent on its maintenance for another six months plus 
being a bit selfish, I wanted the new 20 plate because I was just coming up to, to that being introduced. So I basically got this on the second day of the 20 plate, not the first day, but the second day. And is that a camera van? What the hell is that? So uh, here we are in it now. And it saved us basically the other car paid for paid itself off. Just give it back the we buy any car for a few hundred extra quid in my hand. And uh, didn't have to pay out. Well, it was talk, we're talking about 1500 quid over the next year at minimum maintenance needed on the on the Logan and this is far more comfortable for mother with a bad back and everything go over speed bumps and all that sort of stuff so here we are in an MGHS I would like the EV and everything but it would have cost us a thousand pound for the MG ZS EV on the advance payment and for the amount of miles I've been doing since I've been become my mother's carer it just wasn't worth it I think I did about six to ten, between six and ten thousand miles. Well, I think it was just over six thousand miles in Logan last year. So, you know, having an LPG converted car is only really worth it if you're going to be doing thirty thousand mi miles a year plus. I think twenty, thirty thousand miles. Because another thing I learned is you do have to take a hit when you come to sell it again. In my case, I'm talking about fifteen hundred to two grand. I did. A value was lost in the car just as soon as, it, as soon as I put in the we buy any car my car that, that, that Logan it was like nearly four grand but as soon as it was mentioned that it had an LPG dual fuel conversion if <laughs> they weren't going to give us all flat I was looking okay, I think I got 2200 for it and I was just like yeah oh well but it paid the loan off 1800 pound loan to give me a few hundred pounds spared and here we are don't have to worry about that now this is the this is the car I'll have probably in this one and another one or two of them before mother dies and then I'll have to buy a private car again I think. So we are coming up the building station. Those people, you know, you know the types. Squeaky, squeaky mobility scooter in the back there. <laughs> right, so we'll go back at the spine road, back through Washington, and home again. And that'll be the end of this uh, little nighttime point of view MGHS Excite UK spec manual. Video. I'm pulling away sec Leslie in second there. Sometimes I find it smooth and going all the way through the gears. First and second dead quickly. Right, so now an opportunity to um, wind the window down and see if we can hear these raspy exhausts from the outside. So I'll put in second here. Get the revs up a bit. Can be up the dual carriageway. It's a bit echoey here, hopefully. This thing can be almost fuel efficient, but when you start raking it, it does eat the fuel. So yeah, you can get up and go, but you got to pay the price in the petrol tank for it. And this is the, the other nice thing about it, nice comfortable cruiser. This was automatic, one with the adaptive cruise control, you could travel all the way around the country perfect comfort de-stressed worried about how fast the other traffic are going and then you just need to steer and tell it the speed limit then that would be it so 
well, yeah, if my dust still around another three years and we get another one of these, I think I probably will. I think the, that will go for the automatic one with the adaptive cruise control and um, driver assist and all that. This has got some driver assist, but not, not as much as the uh, automatic one. Uh, the other thing I've heard in China, there is a plug in hybrid version of this now, which has a I mean, it's got, this has got 160 something brake horsepower. The plug-in hybrid one has another 120 brake horsepower, 100 of it in. I think it's because they've mated up with a 2 litre engine instead of a 1.5 turbo like this one. But they mated up with a 2 litre turbo engine, which has like 200 brake horsepower-ish, and you got like another 100 odd brake horsepower out of the electric motor. So it gives you like a, a 300 brake horsepower one of these both motors are combined in acceleration so that from what I've heard gives you a note of 60 time just over six seconds or something in one of these and this is a big beast of a car compared to something small like the Logan I mean I feel like I'm on stilts and I can see I'm up high and I can see the world Let's see if we get some uh, raspiness here a little blip on that
breaking in the, in the touch of Logan. <laughs> do is you can actually turn the lane keep assist off here and that's there you go that, that'll turn to orange that little logo there goes back up here in orange and thing yeah disappears all together so, all right so i now can go over the lanes without it beeping at me all the time all the lines Uh, basic cheapness and value, cheapness to run and own. This is a step up, like. But basically, the same sort of money as a Thatcher Duster. You're getting something with all the soft touch materials and either leather or fox leather interior. It just feels total quality. This. It's got a very Audi Mercedes feel to it inside. even to a duster it just feels huge I mean it's obviously not the biggest 4x4 in them, but for what you're paying for it it's just like big chunk of metal big lump of coal you're getting your like for your money or your mobility allowance as is in our case and for those of you not in the UK um, this is just something, some like charity, government funded, helped charity in the UK called Motability. Helps people um, who are disabled, can't get around and that's basically gets them a new car every four year, every three to four years. And uh, basically pays, does everything for them, you just need to put petrol in it and go. That's how this has ended up being cheaper for us as, uh, now that I'm not taxing anymore and I don't think because of my health concerns I will be going back into it anytime soon. This has just become a cheaper option for us now. I think I've already said the story before, I think in my last video, where the reason for us keeping the Logan was I always thought I was going to go back into it, and you can't use one of these mobility scheme cars to taxi in. It's just to basically to drive the mobility person around and run errands for them and things like that. Family business basically. Can't use it for, can't use a mobility car for business business, just personal business. Personal reasons. So I couldn't even use one of these cars to be a Hermes or an Amazon Flex driver. I'd get in trouble for doing that because you need, in the UK, you need special insurance to run a vehicle to do that. And the only insurance you're allowed to take out, and this is obviously the mobility insurance which comes through the whole package. So, yeah, can't do any commercial work in it at all, private use only. Oh, look, there's an orange socks light. I haven't replaced that one yet. They're like little stars, those things, ones that are still left. Still, one or two of them dotted around here and there. Bringing back memories of when those horrible LEDs like that one there came along. Hope you still like my waffling. Right, the re-tarmac this road going back in a tight picture, but I think it's still quite undulating, so I don't think I'll be able to go as fast as I would like to go on it. Be careful, don't want to trash the new uh no, we have to wait for that because YouTube police are watching and we have to wait to the so that's get past the actual speed limit sign and then I can drop it in the third maybe so from third So 
still got a few more videos to do now as well I've got like the DJ Osmo 3 review with video um, I've got one of something else what else do we get oh the Cratcher unbox Cratcher pressure washer unboxing and things and using using it out of a bucket instead of a pat, tap yeah it's got like a little thing you can stick into a bucket so you don't if you don't have a back garden tap like I don't you can actually use the jet spray from it but it only works with the uh, Cratcher K4s upwards you can't use on the K2s apparently so I think a Cratcher K4 to try that out and I think that's basically it I'm nearly back home now so instead of taking these the rest of the way I'm just going to say thanks again for watching this is the end of the point of view night time first point of view night time driving video of the of our new MGHS 1.5 turbo manual excite trim without the big sunroof and posh lightning inside but still fairly well trimmed and equipped so uh, I'll say thanks again for watching to you all now I'm going back to my place now and get some sleep because it's quite late it's two o'clock I'll take uh, mother to some hospital appointments and things tomorrow so thanks again for watching and remember to like and subscribe. Bye.